My name's Ken Cooper, Lockheed Martin Aeronautics, Fort Worth, Texas. And at the moment you're demonstrating an F-16 Fighting Falcon Victor model? Yes, sir. It's the F-16V Victor, which is uh, Block 72. It's the latest model of the F-16. So we're sitting on the runway here at Nellis Air Force Base, prepare for takeoff, and I'll just throttle up. We're going to advance out for the takeoff. Running down the runway, looking at the airspeed on the left side of my HUD. I'm at 140 knots, nosing up. Relax upon the stick, raise the landing gear. We're off and flying. So we just do it. Just did a, an afterburner takeoff, and we're already at uh, about 400 knots. Altitude is climbing through 3,000 feet, and there is absolutely little, very little, that I need to be doing to fly this aircraft to maintain this flight condition. I don't have to change flap settings, I don't have to change trim, I just throttle up, point the nose up, finished. Is that because it's got a digital flight control system? Yes sir, the aircraft is fly-by-wire, uh, digital flight control computer, and the pilot's input to the aircraft is merely to a computer system. And the computer then controls the services to provide the input. So if I wanted to roll the aircraft, I just apply pressure on the joystick, either to the left or to the right, and the airplane responds to that input. No pressure means stay where you are, which is what the aircraft is doing. Maintain that flight condition. So if I wanted it to roll all the way over, I just apply pressure, and hold that pressure, and then release it when I'm, when I'm finished with the roll. You mentioned it's got an optical avoidance system. How does that work? It does. It has a, um, a GCAS, auto GCAS, automatic ground collision avoidance system. So what that does is as the pilot maybe is maneuvering the aircraft in a high G uh, condition, for example. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate that by just nose, pulling back on the stick. Nose is going up. I'm going through 8.5 Gs right now. I'm just pulling back on the stick. Nose is coming down, and I'm just now blacked out. I've lost consciousness. I've got the nose pointed down, and I'm 55 degrees nose down with the right wing down. The airplane will soon sense that I'm not responding. It rolls the wings level, and it pulls the nose up without any input at all from me. When it stabilizes back at 1G, perhaps now the pilot is, is awakened regained a sense of awareness where he is, and now he can fly the aircraft still. And it's got an air-to-air -air and air-to-ground capability? Absolutely. <clears throat> the new radar on this aircraft, which is the APG-83, allows the pilot to engage both air and ground entities virtually simultaneously. So I'm making a left turn now. <clears throat> And noticing on my air-to-air -air radar display that there are two contacts, two hostile contacts. So I will select one, and I will select the other. And now on my heads-up display, I see that a target designator box in the, in the center is telling me information about that target, about my priority target. If I change to the second target, you can see the, the, two, uh, the separation between the two targets. So now, if I choose, if I feel I need to engage the air, that air target, I simply go to an air-to-air -air mode, which reconfigures the cockpit. The weapon is active. The targets are within the range of the weapon. When that happens, I can simply fire the missile. So at this, this time, I'm going to fire off a missile. Just fired an, fired an MRAM at an air target. This target is actually beyond my visual range. So what I'll do in the cockpit is bring up my targeting pod 
that will allow me to see the target. And I can see that target has been destroyed. I can now select my second target, which I see is on my right hand side. Make the turn. Run around, baby. There's that target. Let's just fire one missile at him. And that target also is destroyed. Now the skies are safe, I can go right back to navigation mode. Okay. Now that the skies are safe, I'm free to head back for home. In my heads-up display, I have navigation information on the far right hand side, is, there's a uh, diamond. That diamond is positioned at the coordinates for the waypoint, the designated waypoint. Just to the right of my flat, flight path marker, there's a navigation symbol, a steering indicator that tells me how to get where I need to be to get to my destination. Right now the symbol's on my right, so I should probably turn to the right. The speed right now is very fast, so I'm going to slow down, just pull the throttle back. Meanwhile, I'm just lining up on the airfield on the runway. Because I can see it. I'll deploy the speed brake. Get the speed to come down. Although I may be flying with my hands on the controls, much of the time they're not doing anything. The airplane again is fly by wire. I give it a command to fly in a certain direction or a certain attitude. It will maintain that attitude. My hands on the control to make, to make fine adjustments, small adjustments and corrections to the flight condition. Speed is now down to 320 knots. At this point, I can actually lower the landing gear. Notice how the cockpit display formats change. Change because I lowered the landing gear and changed the, con the configuration of the jet. task at this point is simply to place the flight path marker on the runway, which is where I want to go, and maintain that condition. Braking, holding the nose up while the main gear is on the ground. And the nose falls down. I'll apply the brakes.
to complete stop.